so let's start. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we will start our next lecture about convolution neural network. So last week we learned about the first model of convolution neural network proposed by Professor Yang Lekun. Uh, we call the model LeNet5 based on the name of Professor Yang Lekun. And after that time, it's around 1998. Uh, at that time, GPU is not there in the market, but the game industry moved the technology forward by creating more GPU for game. Interestingly, arithmetic computation inside GPU can be 100 times faster than CPU. And that makes convolution neural network more easy to be trained on personal computer or server. So Google start a competition in 2017, uh, 2010, until 2017, seven years competition, every year uh, they compete accuracy of the model. Google provide this data set called ImageNet, okay? And this ImageNet contain 14 million annotated image. Uh, you can see ImageNet data set. Uh, provided by Google. And people compete each other, all of the lab researcher around the world make sure to win this competition because they get some money out of uh, the competition, okay? Uh, the competition already stopped and the last model proposed in 2017 is ResNet, yeah? So we will learn about this kind of history up to ResNet than DenseNet during this course. And, and we will review the state of the art day outside this ILSVRC competition. Okay. So you don't have to memorize all of this model. You just have to remember the name of the model for you to be able to prompt the code or get the tutorial from the uh, PyTorch website. Okay. There's a lot of code for implementing all of these models. So don't worry about implementation, but you have to understand what is introduced by the paper. So let's start with Alex Net. So team of University of Toronto led by Professor Hinton and his students create Alex Net as a improvement of the initial Linet model. Their goal at that time, how to increase the accuracy, yeah? And AlexNet architecture introduced many contribution to body of knowledge of convolution neural net. The first one is the ReLU activation. Instead of using uh, sigmoid or tanha uh, tangential nonlinearity for the activation, uh, this paper say just use ReLU function. You can also Fine now, there is many variants of ReLU, like Leaky ReLU, GLU, uh, many type of uh, linear uh, uh, active. And also this is the first time they can train on multiple GPU and introduce LRN, local response normalization. And one technique also introduced in this paper is overlapping pooling. They win a competition they win this competition in 2010 and 12. Okay. They can handle overfitting better using AlexNet. This is the architecture of AlexNet compared to the model on the left. This is Linet compared to AlexNet. As you can see, the increase from image 28, 28 size, it can handle RGB color image three times 
224, and it increases more layers of convolution, pulling, convolution, pulling, convolution three times, pulling, and then fully connected layer. The paper available, you can download, so I believe you have to read it, so you understand the history, especially on some key features that we still using until now, like ReLU or LRM. The next winner from 2014 is Fijijine. This is from University of Oxford. So they also want to increase accuracy by increasing the depth of the convolution neural network. They use 18 weight layers. They introduce small convolutional filter and they're still using ReLU activation from AlexNet, but they only use one LRN layer. If you compare AlexNet and VGG, what VGG has done is actually making a VGG block. Inside the block, there is a specific convolution and pooling, and they replicate the blocks, okay? Because it's hard to paint the picture, so it's better to use the table, okay? Inside the book, you can also see the detail of VGGNet model inside our books in chapter eight. You can see here, VGG network block. Okay. So you can implement the model using the code here, or later, JC will show you how you can prompt uh, some models. Of course, you need GPU, and maybe your uh, Google Collab GPU is not enough, but hopefully in University of Indonesia, we will have better GPU. Okay, next, from University of Singapore, National University of Singapore, the team of uh, students there and professor introduced NIN, Networking Network. The idea is quite unusual because it's mixed between MLP and replaced the CNN layer with MLP convolution. MLP convolution is MLP with ReLU. So inside the layers of convolution, they inject MLP convolution layer. And compared to VGG, it's actually uh, like there is a NIN block that they stack over convolution neural network. Unfortunately, this model is rarely being used now because uh, it's only focused on enhancing the discriminability of the model. And later, Google Net, the team from Google Research, uh, many people here. So they introduced many new concepts, a very important concept called inception module. Okay. So inception module is not based on computer science. It's based on Hebbian principle from neural science. So the insight is coming from neural science, but they win the, the, the competition in 2014. So what is Hebbian principle? So Hebbian principle say that neuron that fire together also wire together. So imagine in this, inside the human brain, we have some neurons connected by synapse. So these neurons create their own wiring uh, grouping. And if they, if they are activated or fired, they also have to be wired together. So this idea translated into convolution neural net as an inception module. Okay, There is two version of inception module. The first one is naive version. So from previous layer, you have uh, one convolution, three convolution, five convolution, three max pool uh, in, in parallel. But with dimensionality reduction, you can actually contain more layers inside the inception layers, okay? With this inception layers, uh, the accuracy is getting better, okay? 
At the same time, around that time, this paper also introduced by Google, and we use it until now. We call it batch normalization. So what is batch normalization? Is to accelerate the convergence of the training by handling the internal covariate shift. Internal covariate shift happen in this inside neural network, and that's why you need normalization layer. So batch normali normalization is normalizing layer inputs, okay? So before entering the next layer, it passed through this function for normalization, okay? As you can see here, they uh, in in the in the pseudo code, uh, they add bn here to normalize the weight parameters be before uh, move to the next layer. The benefit, a lot of benefit from batch normalization. Okay, we can use higher learning rates because all of the data weight parameter is normalized provide better parameter scale and initialization, and it also can be useful as a regular, regularization to reduce the need of dropout, okay? Batch normalization makes it possible for non-saturating uh, non-linearity. Maybe you never heard about dropout until now, but you can use deep learning playground. This is a common technique for regulating the weight parameters that is not being used, you can cut or drop, yeah? So drop out technique means that I can drop during the training. Drop some weight parameter that is not being updated. Okay, so let me continue. So next, ResNet, okay? This model proposed by Microsoft team under Kamin He, yeah. Uh, it the aim of this model is to improve the accuracy, and the idea is residual function. Okay, so think of residual function like connectivity between. So there is a, a, an x here. The identity is additional weight parameters that show connectivity between layers. Okay. So let's say the input is x. So it says that there is some residual function happen. So we need to put some wire to connect it as a identity wire, okay? So initial ResNet residual function is only per next layer, okay? As you can see here in the picture. The total depth is 150 uh, layers of convolution networks, okay, for ResNet. It's hard to make the image, so better to read it on a uh, table, okay? And after that, there is a revision of ResNet. We call it DenseNet, proposed by Tsinghua University, Facebook, and Cornell team. Here, they want to improve accuracy, but the way they do this, is connect all layer residual, okay? Not only for the next layer, like in ResNet, instead of like that, they connect all layer have connectivity or residual function, okay? They do it in fit for uh, uh, connectivity. So the architecture in table, you can see here, okay? More detail you can see in our books in dense net connectivity, yeah? Okay, so after DenseNet, uh, many more model, but one that we can consider as a state of the art is this model, YOLO. You only look once, yeah? Proposed by University of Washington. Uh, so YOLO have, uh, they start with open source, uh, YOLO open source. And now they have a company, and the company name is Ultralytics. Later, you can also see some features of Ultralytics, how to train image using YOLO model. Currently, YOLO is YOLO 9, version 9. 
Uh, this paper that I saw you before is YOLO first, uh, initial version, okay? But now it's uh, version nine, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you can, uh, uh, JC will show you later how to use this ultralytics. Okay, other than YOLO, many attention model and transformer also influence the evolution of convolution neural net. Until now, there's so many model using VIT, fission transformer. This is not based on convolution neural network. This is based on attention and transformer. So we will learn about uh, attention and uh, fission transformer later after we learn about transformer neural network. For now, for this week, you have to be able to reproduce this model, you can find many source code of AlexNet, FijiGNet, Nin, GoogleNet in GitHub, or you can try prompt engineering, uh, but sometimes it fails to train, of course, because ResNet and DeskNet requires um, bigger GPU. If you just using Kaggle T4 or Collab T4, it's hard. So as a summary of this lecture, you can open ConfNet Playground. So this is ImageNet data set. You can check the data. And then you can see so start from VGG. Okay. But there is other model that have less parameters. VGG is one, 143 million parameters. VGG 16, 138 million. Efficient net 30 million. Rest net 25 million. Inception net 23 million. Okay. Dense net 8.1 million. Efficient net. So sometimes our model is overkill if too much parameters. So you can start with small model like mobile net. Mobile net is only 3.5 million parameters. And this is what happened inside the convolution layer. This is how the image is convoluted to get the features. Okay. So the purpose of the convolution layers is to filter the most important features for fully connected layers. Okay. So you can see the deepness of the all of this model and the total number of parameters here. Okay. Uh, using this uh, website. Okay. So let me back to YOLO. So YOLO is quite different because it's provide this kind of architecture modified by the latest information from the Google ILSVRC competition. They make, they design their own model and they name it YOLO. There is YOLO 1, YOLO 2, YOLO 3, YOLO 4, up to YOLO 9, okay? They also have a different cost function and training and they make open source library. So you can see Ultralytics, uh, GitHub. You can use this library to train images. Okay. From um, YOLO 3, YOLO 5, Ultralytics. Okay. You can have more features here. Uh, this is up to YOLO 8 here. And the accuracy on Coco dataset, number of parameters. Okay. So in industry, if you work in industry, usually you work with YOLO, yeah? Because it has more features in here. So uh, in YOLO website, you can log in. Please register now in Ultralytics, yeah? Other than Ultralytics, you can also use landing.ai. Here, they don't mention the model, but you can just upload your data 
and then make labeling or annotate the data. And after that, you pick the model and then train your model and consume the result of the training as an API and integrate to your application. Okay. So other than Ultralytics, you can use Landing AI for simple case of image recognition, classification, segmentation, etc. Other thing that you can try is Super Gradient. It is an open source project. Uh, like YOLO, it's open source. It's, you can use the library called Super Gradient. But Super Gradient support other model, not only YOLO. So YOLO NAS, yeah? YOLO NAS is YOLO with neural architecture search. Means that you can optimize Super Gradient model on the target uh, hardware. Let's say you deploy the model for inference in specific device like CPU or GPU. So you can pick the model that is fit. And the way they fit the model to the hardware is using neural architecture search. So it's a YOLO modified with NAS. NAS is neural architecture search. So they publish many model, useful model, and they benchmark the result using some specific hardware like Jetson, Zafir NX, or other devices, okay? So this is also good, free, you can try. There is a Google Collab here for basic classification, segmentation, post-estimation, object detection, et cetera, okay? <clears throat> Just open the GitHub and install using pip install, and you can run the Python notebook as an example. Other way to find good model for your research is Hugging Face. Okay, If you go to Hugging Face, click the model, you can see here many models for depth estimation. From camera, you can estimate the depth, image classification, image segmentation, text, image to text, image to image. Yeah. So based on this category, you can get many model here. Let's say open AI clip VIT. VIT means vision transformer. And the model is keep growing. Okay. Other than hugging face, you can go to paper split code. This is also have a lot of state of the art regarding computer vision. Computer vision now has total 1,371 tasks. Okay. So many papers here. This is a very rapid moving field of research. Yeah. So you can see here. So as the master degree students, you have to be familiar with these two websites, Hugging Face and Papers with Code. Uh, this is the way we get uh, source code from the latest paper. OK. OK. Other important website for your research is Arsif. So you, have, you can search, for example, Fission Transformer. And then it gives you some many papers here, and you can check. So RCIF and papers with code will be your best friend. OK, so that's it for today from me. We completed chapter 8 today. I hope you can continue the practical session with JC to make sure you can develop your own conclusion neural network. Next week, we start to enter recurrent neural networks, chapter nine, and modern recurrent neural network. And then we enter attention and transformer, and then generative model like GANs and diffusion, stable diffusion, as a closing of this course. OK, before I give to JC, is there any question? OK. Nice. So uh, thank you. Uh, please, JC, uh, continue with practical session. Get some code with Chrome and also introduce Ultralytics, maybe, 
if you have time then super guardian okay sir. uh let me share my screen first <coughs> okay uh hello everyone good afternoon uh, welcome to the practical session of this uh, course uh i hope everyone can uh, open their google collab uh, but maybe we are not going to run on this session uh first uh we are going to do going to implement some of the uh convolutional neural network that we are we we were just discussing uh which is uh like alexnet uh densenet google net uh what those uh algorithms so uh with the GPT, we are going to prompt this prompt this uh, algorithms and ask them to create this in python and google collab so uh first we are going to use the alexnet using the same data set as before which is mnist uh and as you can see this is the uh prompt that we are using i hope uh let me copy so everyone can can do the prompting also <clears throat> so okay uh this is the code that python gave us uh they are creating uh, a class of alexnet with an module and this is the features which is convolution value uh max pool 2d and doing and repeating and the fourth function and transformer uh which basis of 64 using the mnist data set uh, and initialize the model of alexnet and here we are using uh, 10 epochs and they are giving the uh, evaluation of the our trainnet model i see uh sadly this training uh took many times to complete so what i have here is the completed uh already run Google Collapse. Let's see ah, this one. So we don't waste time on waiting this uh, model to completing the training. In here we have the uh, AlexNet boot. We run it. In here we finish the training with the accuracy of model is 0.99 one five which is ninety nine percent of accuracy uh in practice you are going to use on google if you are using google collab you are going to change the runtime to t4 gpu but uh so you know this uh runtime or gpu is very limited on google Lab. so if you are if you have a uh, better local machines like your computer or laptop with with good GPU or main RAMs, so I I really encourage you to use those instead, or any machines that has a uh, good GPU. Uh, this ones this one took couple minutes, like maybe fifteen or thirty. Uh, to completely train. Uh, so this is the result for AlexNet we are using on data set MNIST. And uh, the next we are going to use a VGGNet model. And uh, this one, we want to change the model name to VGG underscore model. So basically the same thing, but we are using a VGGNet architecture or for our training uh <clears throat> this is the features for vggnet all the options and everything 
using Amnesty dataset also with page size 642 uh, and we are using uh, initialize the model with CG and score model with the same epoch and testing the accuracy maybe for so everyone can have the same code I will paste the code for each uh, architecture on the paste the pin and share it on and the chat because it will it is not enough to paste on the chat see this is for the alexnet all right uh i will copy this link and i hope you can run on your spare time uh not because this will took some time i see uh someone asked how to use gpo for implementing a model like i can access 10 gpo on my friend's laptop but when i was running the code on google cloud it took some time as uh my own laptop without gpo uh wait let me see it is, is it on also on google collab uh, on Google Colab, you can actually uh, uh, apa ya? configure the GPU to use. If you are paying, you are using a best GPU in here, A GPU and V100 GPU. But you can also uh, run uh, the runtime on your local machine. If you are using, you, your local machine have good GPUs. You can totally connect your GPUs to your local runtime. This one, this uh, reset connect, connect uh, to a local runtime, and maybe you can prompt the chat GPT uh, how exactly these instructions uh, based on your local machines. If you're using uh, Windows or if you're using any OS, uh, better ask GPT or Google so you can try to run this the code you are running on your local machines this is the steps uh you can just pick an url and uh, nah. there's actually instructions to run your code on your local runtimes with jupyter notebook also you can use uh vs code vs code actually uh provides ways to run similar types of code like in once in google Collab, which is this uh cell based with the cell running each cell individually uh as long as long as your file name is dot epyynb so uh there are many options to run your code on google Collab if you if it's uh not too heavy uh if it's heavy you can use your own local runtime or use uh just use vs code but you you have to uh import the library because in google collab it's already imported automatically all right uh that's for running uh this code on local machines uh okay we will continue on the architecture i'm sorry mm. next one is we are going to implement is oh we already uh, implement the vg model let's see this is the architecture for the vg net for function same right this is the our training epoch uh, the first epoch the second until the last epoch but this one uh, has the final test accuracy of only one, 0.1135, which is bad. Uh, maybe there are some uh, hyperparameters that we can set to give better uh, results on the accuracy. Or this maybe we are, uh, this data set is not good with VGNet. Uh, you have to figure it out which is the best 
architecture for each data set. All right, this is the implementation of VGNet uh, in general of Epox and the loss. And after that, you can, you can try the next uh, modern convolution CNN, which is GoNet. Uh, we have the same. Ah, let me paste the code for VGG Net first. See, let me create a new paste. This one is for VGG Net. Let me code. Let me code. Yes. All right. Okay. This one is for uh Fujinet. Uh, for Google Google Net, we have this code. I just uh copy and paste it from this ChatGPT. Uh, but seeing the uh implementation. We have the module with branches. This is how Google Net uh, implements and forward from branch one to branch four. And this is the Google Net and the features of like this. And we have the same batch size uh, and initialize the model with Google Net, which is uh, declared. And we run the epox of 10. Right. Uh, I have tried to run this uh, implementation, but at this time, my uh, limits on GPU usage on Google Cloud was already limited. So this one took hours to complete even one epox. So this is uh, why you, you need to have good GPUs, especially for machine learning and this uh, data, by, data uh, deep learning. And this one actually hasn't finished even one epoch. So uh, I give you all a try on this uh, infrastructure to train with GoNet on MNIST uh, data set. You can copy this code. Let me copy this first on uh, paste pin. Let's see. This one is called Google Net. Let me copy this first and on the chat. All right. And actually, this is not. Uh, the batches, this is the amount of loops because the in here we can see the for epochs the number of uh, loops we are using and it the inside it has uh, another loops if we are go have a batch of c64 and the amnest data set I think has around 60,000 uh, images uh, it will run and and it will loops for around six thousand divided by sixty four, uh, batch size, which is around nine hundred. So it will run for nine hundred and uh to complete uh an epoch. So it will took a lot of time if you are using just CPU. Uh, this one the CPU. Uh, and TPU is also GPU, but uh, it will, but it is also limited uh, on usage, especially on free Google Cloud. App. And uh, I will continue on the next uh, next implementation, which is the REST app or residual. Uh, let me copy the code first. I also have an have the time to run this uh, implementations because the all of those limitations and I've also tried 
uh, running it on my local machines, but this also doesn't work because my local machine is not that good for training. Let me copy this code and help you all can also run this. Let's see, this is for a snap. Let me copy this uh, paste bin for a snap. I hope you all can try this uh, implementations or try something uh, from the start. Okay, this, that's all for uh, the implementations of uh, modern CNN techniques and or architectures. And next, we will try to use uh, uh, the website that Sarisman was talking, which is uh, called uh, ultraltix.ai. Ultraltix.com. Let me paste the. I hope everyone can uh, sign in and see the website for yourself. I have already made my account, so here it is. In here, we can see our free plan has quite large uh, storage, which is 20 gigabytes. And in here, in, in the left, we have data sets. In datasets, we have uh, some of the datasets that this website has already provided to us, like the Simpsons, Fistron, XV, Google with uh, on 2020. And you can also upload your own dataset. But in here, we can try uh, using the provided dataset of Coco. Coco is, as you can see, let me click on this on our view. Uh, this dataset is a large uh, scale object detection, segmentation, and captioning dataset published by Microsoft. So this is it has many uh, items, which is percent two hundred and fifty seven thousand by cycle, and many things too. Uh, so we can train our model with this dataset. If you are going to train the uh, dataset, you can just like on the data set you are going to use, let me see here. Uh, we're going to use Coco 2017 and train the model in Android. And in here we can choose uh, YOLO we are version we are going to use. And as you can see here, there are uh, some of information of the accuracy and the speed. Like for this one, it has like 37 accuracy, the speed is quite high. Let me see, this is better accuracy. As you can see, we can choose uh, uh, NC, which is best for our uh, data set. And uh, time, we are, if, we are, if we have many times, we, are, we, have, we can use the better speed, but better accuracy. So uh, I see here, which is maybe around this one, maybe you will give chain five. Let me see 37.3. This one 52. Let's try the yellow V8X. This one, if you have uh, advanced model configuration, you can set your own epochs and image size and many things you are going to use. And in here, we are going to use GPU, so it's going to be faster. I hope, uh, and you can set the amount of GPUs. Uh, for this one, I will set the default for advanced model configuration and just continue. Let's see. Oh, let me change the model name first. Oh, you don't have to. All right. On the step three, uh, you can have you can train the our model on the. Ultralytics cloud, but you have to pay for pro plan. What you can do is for free is using Google Collab or bring your own agent. I will uh, show you for if you are going to use Google Collab, you just have to copy this code 
and run it on your Google Colab and just paste. Let's see. If it's going to work. Ah, I think you have to uh, use the open Google Colab from this button. Let's see. Open Google Colab. All right. Ah, here, here it is. You have to run this set of first, which is this uh, cell of code. You can copy. Ah, this one is error. Let me uh, paste the set of first. I'm going to expire it. Let it run to import the Ultra Analytics uh, libraries. Let's see. See uh, running. Ah, it finished. Let us run the second cell. I hope this is going to work. Okay. Yeah. Logging first. All right. The uh, authentication was successful. And they're going to what was the error uh right i think this one uh i think the my runtime for, for gpu uh still limited for this one but i have let me show you uh what a completed train looks like let me let's see Book, uh, for politics. Because this uh, training will also take some time to complete, uh, up to an hour maybe you can. Uh, it's all based on the amount of data set you are using, of course, and the uh, parameters. But this one took some time. If it's completed, this one have completed the full 100 epochs. This is the process of training. It's all going to happen in here. And this is the summary of uh, the training with class, images, instances. And this, this will do a live update on in here, if you are uh, connected on the Google app, uh, let me show you my finished model that already been trained fully. This one, uh, this one. Right, this is the model, the trained model I'm I was using before. This one. Uh, this is also used the uh, Coco 2017 and this is the matrix for as you can see this is they give us many uh, visualization of our training with box loss class loss and object loss uh, and the charts and many things you can also preview ah this in here we can also uh, see our training model and try to uh, use it uh, to predict some things. Let's see, uh, this is the one of the past pictures they give us. Let's see if they are going to detect the true. Uh, all right, uh, as you can see, they this is the predictions for our. Uh, Classifications, so you can see the bus, the person, person, person. Uh, they are all correct for this one. Uh, you can also upload your own image and use a camera for this. In here, you can also uh, deploy your your own uh, this model to the cloud. 
they are going to give you a link uh, to the, the documentations and the sample request for using it. In here, you can just copy this code and you can change the path to your image path. And this is the configurations for uh, running the model. And it will uh, give you the results for your predictions on the model you are just uh, training. Okay, uh, easy enough for using ultra, ultra latex. You are you don't have really to code very much. It will do it for you. You just have to copy and paste the code and train it. Wait to, and it will give the. Uh, you it will deploy your dataset automatically. Another uh website. There, are something like this is called landing.ai. Let me paste the code first. The link, I mean, and you can log in and let's see. Uh, but this one for landing AI, they are the free trial is has some uh, time limitations of 30 days and it has for the the free trial has a credit a thousand credit limit uh, for a month so you have to use it uh, carefully unless you are going to pay for this uh, this you know, this website in here we can just uh, create a new project to train and they will give us some option object detection segmentation classification or visual prompting uh, object detection is like before it says boxes uses boxes like uh, this one it uses boxes to select where is the object is. Sorry. Uh, for this one, I will choose the object detection. And they have some sample data. Not very much, but let me see. Uh, SP. Let's use the foreign objects on inspect food. In here, let's see, they are manually uh, selecting the items that is uh, the foreign, which is a screw in this in this data set. They are manually labeling these squares uh, to select which is the squares on this lab on this data set. And if you, you have chosen your data set, you can train this model. It will cost some credits, of course, so be careful. Uh, but you have 1,000 credits. It will train the data set. And see the error. Okay, it is still calculating model our model's uh, performance. All right, uh, loading matrix, and we should be able to use this model uh, immediately. But it is still training the loading matrix. Maybe it took some time. Uh, if you are if you have already trained your model, you can uh, loop the predictions. Let me see if uh, I can see. Oh, nah. All right, this one. It has one hundred prediction and one hundred recall. If you are if you want to predict, you can upload an image of like this one. Uh, or use a webcam. It will cost uh one credit. You can also deploy deploy your model to uh, online like the Ultralytics. 
uh, if you want to predict, you can upload, but currently I don't have an image like this to predict. If you want to uh, use your own uh, data set, you can try uploading a new data set, like create project, and the data set, you can upload the data set. Uh, I have already tried using this data set. Let me see. Called uh, car. Let me paste this link on the. Um, I will just summarize our training methods. In here, let me see. I have uh, uploaded the images. If you have downloaded the data set. Uh, and you can select the uh, data set in this has this one has around 1000 files but please use less than this because our each training image will cost an uh, uh, create points so use by solely this 500 or don't that much is not eh, is fine so if you have uploaded the image, uh, you will see in one of my projects, this one. First, you will select this, the image manually, like this one. Let's see. Uh, I have uh, squared the image I want to detect. And on this one, I will uh, square the cards also the cars this this is all done manually on um, i try to do this on 20 data sets out of 900 i think if this is if it's uh has no in has no cars i will just leave it to be let's see on the 21 two all right there's no cars in here so you can you just uh, have to square this cars the cars manually or uh, if it's if there is cars and uh, you can train the model on our labeled data sets uh, you just have to minimum of 10 data set I think. 10 images to make this uh, run and this one has right uh, let's see if you can upload or a new image to this model uh, one sec see I've uploaded the image and ah it, take, it will take some time ah it it detects uh, our car which is in here and and the square which is uh, where the car is all right uh, maybe that's all uh, that's all for today for this uh, session thank you thank everyone. you thank you thank you jesse thank you everyone so please practice your prom engineering and also ultralytics and lending.ai and if you have time, you also take a look on Super Gradient because it provides you YOLO with neural architecture search target to your uh, inference device. Okay, see you next week. We will start learn about recurrent neural network next week.